This is Captain Robert Falcon Scott. He was born on the 6th of June 1868 and died on the 29th of March 1912. He was born in Plymouth in Devon. He joined the Royal Navy and rose to become a captain. He went on two expeditions to the Antarctic, one on a boat called the Discovery, which you've already learned about, and also a second trip on a boat called the Terra Nova, which means new land, that left Cardiff on the 15th of June 1910. Captain Scott wanted to be the first person to go to the South Pole, and whilst there, conduct many scientific investigations into Antarctica as well. The Terra Nova was a little Scottish whaling boat. It was designed with a very thick hull so it could go through tough ice, and it was powered by coal and sails. Captain Scott was not the only person who wanted to be first to the South Pole. A famous Norwegian explorer called Roald Amundsen also wanted to get there first. The Terra Nova was terribly overloaded. It had on board 65 men, 34 dogs, 19 Siberian ponies, and all of the food, petrol and coal that they would need for the long Antarctic voyage. Looking after the animals on board was a very popular job for the men to do. The Southern Ocean is one of the roughest in the world and sometimes the dogs and ponies were nearly washed overboard by the storms. Icebergs are a constant threat in the Southern Ocean and the crew had to watch out for them all the time. Terra Nova was an ice-breaking ship. This means that it could sail right up to the coast of Antarctica through the sea ice. The hull of the ship was incredibly thick and strong and could break its way through the ice that forms all around the coast of the continent. The Terra Nova arrived at Ross Island in Antarctica on the 4th of January 1911. The first thing is to be taken off the boat with the ponies and the dogs as they had not had any proper exercise all the time they were on the ship. It took the whole crew a full week to get everything off of the boat. They took off all the stores, the food, the animals, the motor sledges, and all the materials they needed to build some huts to stay in. They managed to work day and night, because in the Antarctica this time of year, the sun does not set. The entire crew were very happy to be off of the ship. They also brought with them enough wood to build huts to stay in during the harsh Antarctic winter. Inside this hut there were rooms for the men, laboratories for the scientists, Captain Scott had his own private office where he planned his trip to the South Pole, there was storage for all of the food, storage for the ponies. The dogs however were tough enough to sleep outside. The sun set for the last time on the 23rd of April 1911. The entire crew spent the rest of the Antarctic winter inside, including Captain Scott's 43rd birthday. Scott's plan was to march to the South Pole starting in January. He would take 16 men in three groups using motor sledges, ponies and dogs. Only one of these groups would continue on to the South Pole. The motor sledges failed after about 80 miles. Sadly, the ponies didn't survive the cold either. This eventually left just the men hauling the massively heavy sledges with all of their food, supplies and tent. On the 3rd of January 1912, five men were left to go to the South Pole. Scott, Wilson, Oates, Bowers and Evans. At the same time, Roald Amundsen was making his way to the South Pole he decided to use dogs to pull sledges all the way there. Scott's five-man team eventually arrived at the South Pole on the 18th of January 1912. When they arrived, they discovered Amundsen's tent, a Norwegian flag, a letter to Captain Scott, and a letter for the King of Norway. Scott's men were absolutely devastated not to be first. They stopped and rested at the South Pole for several days, taking measurements and trying to gain strength for the walk back. It 
it was a total distance of 900 miles. For the first three weeks the weather was good, they made good progress. Afterwards, Evans fell and injured his head, came down with frostbite and died in his sleeping bag on the 17th of February. Things got worse and worse for the four remaining men. The temperature dropped to minus 40, there were blizzards constantly, they were suffering from frostbite and they were running out of food. Captain Oates was suffering with frostbite. On the 17th of March 1912, he left the tent telling his fellow men, I'm going out and I may be some time. He walked out into the blizzard and was never seen again. He sacrificed himself so that his friends might have some more food and manage to survive a little longer. Scott, Wilson and Bower struggled on for another few miles. They eventually came to a point on the 20th of March where they were only 11 miles from a place they had buried lots of food and petrol. The blizzard outside stopped them from leaving. For the next nine days they were stuck in their tent. They had run out of food, they had run out of petrol. The blizzard kept them inside. A search party was sent out on the 29th of October, the first time the weather allowed them to go. Eventually, on the 12th of November, the search party found the tent containing the frozen bodies of Scott, Wilson and Bowers. Scott's diary was retrieved along with other personal effects. They searched for Captain Oates but his body was never found. Their tent became a tomb. The search party collapsed it down on top of their bodies, buried it with snow and placed a wooden cross above made out of two wooden skis. <laughs> 